So you're thinking about moving to Frisco, Texas, but you kind of want to know the good and the bad, the pros and the cons, what to look out for, maybe what you should avoid whenever you're making that move to Frisco. Well, that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. Definitely stick around because we're going to cover the downsides as well. That's right, the cons. There are several of them uh, moving to Frisco. You don't want to miss out on those, and we're going to get after it right now. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is about living in Dallas, Texas and the surrounding areas like Frisco, then subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market in Dallas. My name is Levi, my partner Travis and the team and I, you know we get calls, texts and emails every single day from people just like you and you and you and you looking to make their move to Dallas. We absolutely love it. So whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, just give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email. We're happy to help you make a smooth move to Dallas. And here we are, we're talking about the pros and the cons, the good and the bad about uh, living in and moving to Frisco, Texas. So here's the thing, Frisco uh, is, the population right now is right around 200,000. That's growing rapidly. It's actually had a 72% increase since 2010. So all, getting close to almost doubling in size just within the last 10 years. Uh, but however, it's all in a good way. And there's something to be said about Frisco. It's, I mean, it's the most popular area in Dallas and also uh, been named several times, even as early or as, yeah, as early as, uh, or as late as you could say 2018 is the best city in America to live. That's absolutely crazy. So actually it's not crazy. There's a lot of good things going on with Frisco, but we're gonna tell you the good things and the bad things so you can get a good idea of uh, what to look out for when you're considering it. Right now, uh, we're seeing a lot of people move in from California, New York, uh, Seattle, or uh, uh, Washington State, uh, Washington DC, uh, Illinois, and so all of these areas, uh, most people usually ask about Frisco first. So uh, now there's a lot of good areas all around Frisco, so we don't wanna leave those out, but we are gonna focus on Frisco right now. And I will say, uh, if we start out with one of the downsides, the downside to Frisco right now is if you're especially if you're looking at new construction, it's practically sold out. It's almost nearly uh, impossible, not quite impossible if you're working with the right team to find new construction properties. However, we do have some uh, of our own methods that we use uh, to still uh, come across new construction properties in Frisco. So you'll definitely have to reach out on that. But if you were to just call around, most likely you're going to be put on a wait list. Uh, because and even if there is a wait list and those wait lists could be one to two sometimes 300 people long uh, right now a lot of the communities right now just completely sold out most of them sold through their phases that they were planned to sell through in the next two years and so imagine that whenever there are those lots that they were planning to release over the next two years have already been spoken for the demand is absolutely crazy. So that is one thing as far as a downside right now. If you're looking for new construction, however, the same thing with pre-existing homes, the inventory is extremely low right now. And we're not seeing a, a, a let up of any influx of people moving into the Dallas area. Actually, they're slated, uh, Dallas is slated to be one of the top markets, if not the top market for 2022. So what does that mean? That means that here, uh, in the Dallas area, we're not gonna see much of a slowdown. There's probably not gonna be a crash coming up. Now, interest rates are gonna go up, but here's the deal is that all these other cities and areas across the country that they're, they're, some of the, the housing is a lot more uh, pr pricier and inflated than in, in Dallas. So people are moving here as a safe haven because there are steady increases in the home values, it's not as crazy as uh, some of the other markets, especially like in Austin or Phoenix or some of these other areas, Vegas even, you, where they're starting to see the, the increase in the prices significantly. Now, Austin is definitely, I, I would say, uh, a little bit overpriced right now getting there. And so their, their increases are growing more and more. I don't know how long that's sustainable, but at the same time, it's still here in Texas and there's a lot of people just moving in general. So, you know, Austin may not crash, it's just that it is very popular. But the thing is, is with Austin, you're landlocked uh, because it is hill country down there. You're waterlocked because of some of the rivers uh, and, and uh, some of the other uh, ge geography down there. So with that, that is uh, definitely creates a little bit more of demand on the, the properties because there's less space, unlike Dallas, where you continue to grow out and out now. Now, that's one of the things that we believe will help keep Frisco prices mostly in check 
uh, North Dallas, uh, Dallas areas mostly in check is the fact that people will be willing to drive a little bit further outside of Frisco uh, to get a, a less expensive house. And that's where all the new construction is happening is in the north and the northeast and everywhere around there. So think about this. If you could just add another 10 minutes to your commute uh, and get out of Frisco, then that's that's what I believe will actually help keep prices in check. Now, the deal is, is that uh, Frisco is becoming like the new hub. So here's a pro to Frisco is that I believe the DFW or Dallas Fort Worth as it's abbreviated to the DFW it's always been referred to as DFW not the DFW but DFW uh, I believe that is actually you heard it here first now I believe uh, we're gonna become DFFW which is Dallas Frisco Fort Worth that's how important Frisco is I do believe it's going to be the next uh, hub you could say uh, over uh, probably even growing uh, more more uh, rapidly than than Fort Worth downtown Fort Worth. So the thing is is that Frisco they slate within the next 10 years may have more office space than downtown Dallas. That's kind of hard to believe, but there's a lot of corporations and businesses moving into the Plano and Frisco area and since Plano borders Frisco, well, that's that's a uh, that it makes it ideal for the commute, right? You don't have much of a commute if you're going from Frisco to Plano. It could be 5 to 10, maybe 15 minutes just depending on where you live all throughout Frisco. So maybe at the max 15 minutes, uh, maybe 20 if there's really bad traffic to get from Frisco to Plano. And with the amount of corporations that are moving there, over 25 corporations just moved to Plano in 2020 alone, major corporations. Now you're seeing uh, tech giants uh, coming from California in droves as well. And that's what we believe is also going to just continue to create the demand here in the North Dallas area. So we don't see any slowdown in that at all whatsoever. Inventory is extremely hard to come by. Uh, prices are mostly stable here. We're not seeing large increases. Um, I mean, out, outrageous increases, you could say. They're still predicting uh, Dallas to grow by 16% next year in home prices. Now that's, that's a great return on your investment or your home purchase. So even if you're thinking of waiting, here's what we recommend is, guys, and girls, <laughs> the, the uh, interest rates right now are at all time lows. And think about this, if you buy, even if it's not your forever home or your dream home, you buy right now with interest rates the way they are, you're gonna get much more home for what you can afford. And then on top of that, if the home prices do appreciate and keep up with what they're predicting for uh, up to 16% by next year, that's serious equity in your house. Now imagine if uh, you decided to look at the same time. Now if you rent or something, you're gonna be throwing that money away anyways. So here, at least if you put it into a house, there's there's a good opportunity for you to get some return on that, have some equity possible. And if we find you a new construction, even better. Uh, but all those, all those situations um, are realistic right now and we don't see a let up in Dallas. But here's the deal. Dallas prices are really good to where, you know, your five, six hundred thousand dollar house, which is where we're seeing, you know, our average buyer come in at around five sixty five. If the market were to crash tomorrow anyways, that home is not going to be worth two hundred fifty thousand. You're not going to lose fifty percent in equity or value in that home. But at the same time, what we always recommend is hopefully you're buying a home that you're going to be in for the next two to four years. If that's the case, you're going to outlive any type of market crash, even if the market crashed and went down for a whole year, if you're planning to stay there two, three, four years, it's likely gonna recover, you're gonna regain the value in that house, and then you know you make a move at that time. So just a little bit of a patience. But if, you, if you're if you moving just to move, and then you plan to move uh, within the next six months or a year, that's usually not the ideal situation unless you're gonna turn that property into a rental, uh, you know, and then uh, go from there. So that's just something to keep in mind as far as uh, you know whenever you're thinking uh, about waiting possibly to to buy so let's get back to the pros and cons uh, of Frisco we already mentioned a one con one pro here's another pro the school system in Frisco uh, top-notch uh, Frisco has actually just been rated number one in Collin County Collin County is right above Dallas Dallas County uh, so Collin County has like Frisco yeah uh, prosper it has Plano you know all those surrounding areas uh, uh, Fairview was rated number one, so uh, it looks like Frisco just took over that number one spot, but they kind of go back and forth anyways between number one and number two. But overall, let's see what Frisco has been rated uh, number five in all of Dallas Fort Worth and number seven in the state of Texas. So imagine that coming into Frisco, 
uh, number seven rated public school system in the state of Texas, number five in all of Dallas-Fort Worth, number one in Collin County. So that's a big draw. That's why people, so many people want to move to Frisco and they have a lot of schools, 10 high schools, 17 middle schools, 42 elementary schools. That is actually another pro is that the student to teacher ratio is uh, about 14 to one, 14 students to one teacher. So, you know, when we talk to residents and, and uh, uh, especially families and parents that's what they love about Frisco as well the school system is because there are so many uh, think about that 10 high schools that allows for a smaller class size you look at Allen next door Allen has uh, like one high school with about 5,000 students in that one high school that's a lot so imagine uh, sending your kid to a, a better rated school system plus they have they have a, a you know more teachers uh, to spread around, you could say. And so that keeps the, the class sizes small and intimate, and that's what people really, really love about Frisco. On top of that, top-notch academics, uh, sports, everything you, you have in Frisco. And we even have a, uh, we just came out with a new video about $300,000, uh, what can $300,000 get you in Frisco? Even those neighborhoods are attached to a highly, highly rated school system. So even if you're, um, you know, on a lower price point, that doesn't mean you have to compromise on school systems in the Frisco area. So that's a really big pro uh, with Frisco. All right, another great pro about uh, Frisco is going to be access to the lakes. You know, you can pretty much get everywhere uh, that you need to as far as lake access. You're right next door pretty much to Lake Louisville, uh, one of the uh, most fun lakes to uh, get to in Dallas-Fort Worth. You can also bop over to Lake Lavon as well, even Lake Ray Hubbard. But you're not that, even if you wanted to go to Lake Texoma, that's not even that far away when you go to the lake on the Texas-Oklahoma border. So so, uh, and you're gonna, not gonna have that much traffic getting up there to Lake Texoma, but of course Lake Louisville is gonna, going to be the closest lake to you. We've had tons of fun on that. Well, we still have fun on that lake as well as, as, as much as the others too. So uh, you got lake life pretty much in your backyard. That's a good thing. Uh, now the colony and Little Elm border the lake, but Frisco's right next door to that. So it's very simple to get over there. You can either go to the Little Elm, to the, to the beach, that area, or to the south side of Lake Louisville. Going to be the closest uh, options for you to get over there to the lake. But otherwise, you get out on Louisville Lake, you got, um, I mean, just beautiful views when you're out there. It's always going to be a lot cooler. It's a great place to cool down in the summertime, uh, especially when it warms up. And then when you're on the lake as well, you have some of the best sunsets over there on Lake Louisville. Of course, we're a fan of uh, Lake Ray Hubbard as well uh, over in the Rockwall area. But if you're out there, either way, if you're on the lake and you catch the sunset, they're, they're, they're gorgeous here in the Dallas area. So uh, absolutely amazing. So you have easy access to lake life. All right, another great thing about Frisco is going to be diversity. If you're looking for diversity, I tell you what, uh, I just I read through an article in the Wall Street Journal about uh, why everyone is moving to Texas. And diversity was highly ranked on there for the Dallas area. And actually, when they, they did the uh, run the results or the test or whatnot, like Frisco, McKinney, Plano, Louisville, Everywhere around Frisco, these all ranked very, very high for most diverse suburbs. So that's a really good thing if you're looking for some diversity as well. Then the North Dallas area is is, is poised for that. On top of that, you know, and even in the Dallas area, we just we don't have the the neighborhoods that are referenced uh, like in New York or uh, in L.A. or um, Chicago. Some of these other areas where they have. Uh, like Chinatown or Koreantown or something like that. I mean, there's never really been a section of town in Dallas that's just, uh, you want to say, sectioned off like that you, uh, or referred to as that. I mean, ultimately, that's what I do love about Dallas. We're even accepting with our sports teams. It's funny, you know, I spent some time in New Orleans, and if you weren't a Saints fan in New Orleans, then you weren't really welcome there. Uh, where, you know, in Dallas, because so many people move here from not just all over the country, but from all over the world, you know, you go into a sports bar, you're going to see about 50% Dallas Cowboys fans. And then you're going to see a Giants fan and a Raiders fan, you know, and a Bears fan over here. And then, of course, the annoying Patriots fans. Uh, but you'll see a good mix of people in the sports bars, uh, you know, diversity-wise, I, I think a great mix. And, again, there's never been those, those spots around town that, that reference certain areas or anything like that because I think everybody's just – 
everybody's just meshed together and that's the cool thing about it. But otherwise, uh, even in this recent article, they talked about how diverse the North Dallas area is, especially these, these cities like Frisco and Plano. Uh, and so that's just something to keep an eye on or uh, keep an eye out for. If uh, you know that's what you're looking for, then, then uh, we have great diversity here in the Dallas area. All right, another great thing about Frisco, of course, you've got easy access to the airport, only about 25 minutes. You can uh, jump down the SRT, Sam Rayburn Tollway to get there. It's gonna run right into the airport, so that's not going to be a long trip, about 25 minutes, and there's usually, traffic is not too bad on those tollways. They've really developed those uh, quite well to uh, minimize the flow uh, of or the stop of traffic you could say they've minimized the uh, e efficiency of traffic that's what I should say and so that's something to just uh, keep an uh, keep an eye out for you should have a very short easy commute to the airport uh, simple uber ride if that's what you're gonna do as well but overall same thing with downtown downtown is gonna be about 30 minutes uh, without any traffic but you'll probably take the Dallas North tollway that's the easiest route to get down there and that is a road less travel of course the tollways are always going to be a little bit less travel because they're tollways and that would be a downside and a con of Frisco is that the Dallas North Tollway and the Sam Rayburn Tollway are the two major highways that border Frisco and they're going to be the easiest for you to get practically anywhere to the airport to downtown Dallas uh, to get up north uh, pretty much everything you're going to be doing if you need to get on one of those highways it's going to be one of the toll roads so that's something that I would say would be a downsize is that uh, majority of your commute could be on tollways uh, so uh, hey, <laughs> just uh, you got to think of different ways you can get around that. Maybe your company can pay your toll tag. Maybe uh, I don't know. You can you can take the side streets. If you take the side streets, maybe you you work in Plano. You could probably go down Preston Road or Coit or um, Midway or something like that. Any of these roads that you should be able to get down very easily to Plano. Uh, now you just have to go through a few stoplights. But again, if that's not a big deal, then then uh, it would save you on the tolls every single day, but probably add five, 10 minutes to your, your commute, depending on where you're going. Now, if you're gonna be commuting to downtown Dallas, uh, you're probably gonna wanna take the tollway. Unless you live on the east side of Frisco, then you should be able to get to 75 very easily, and that'll get you down to, uh, that'll get you to downtown Dallas very easily. But if you're working remote, working from home, then you probably won't have to worry about tolls that much and just whenever you need to get around they are going to be the most convenient so just keep an eye out that's what you're going to you'll have to pay for those tolls all right another great pro to frisco is, is everything's new i mean it's really been developed in the last 20 years and they it, it's a master plan suburb not just a master plan community but a master plan suburb so this is something before they really started to initiate the growth of Frisco, which that's all started with like the Stonebriar Mall around 2000. Um, by the way, if you want to see all the other price ranges of homes, uh, we've got videos like I mentioned the 300, we also got 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and a million dollars in Frisco. What all of those price ranges will get you. So if you're researching Frisco quite a bit, uh, definitely check out the other videos on this channel. We have quite a few of them. So. Uh, but otherwise, everything's new, brand new. I want to say brand new. I mean, within the last 20 years, and they're still building every single day, not just communities, but commercial aspect. Now, it's a master plan suburb from the fact that they have planned out Frisco from the get-go. So it's one of the cities where you're going to see very, very minimal uh, power lines. I mean, even in the neighborhoods, the commercial areas, all of that, the, you know, they've started to build everything underground, which is really cool. I, I mean... Power lines, unless you've never really noticed them before, they could take away from the look of a neighborhood or even a commercial area. So it's just something that uh, maybe not as well noticed, but when you go to Frisco, you'll see that you won't just you won't see a lot of them. But that's the cool thing because it just keeps everything nice and neat. But otherwise, they've planned everything to where there's certain building codes, building looks, you know, the architecture, the uh, how everything is laid out, the planning, all of that has gone into uh, you know before you can actually start constructing commercial or residential property on there as well so of course now in the residential side all of the individual communities will are judged by or determined by the whoever's building out that community but as far as the commercial aspects there's a certain uh, you know uh, consistency not cookie cutter but consistency you'll find uh, in a lot of the commercial aspects. So even the strip malls don't look like, uh, they look nice. They're very, very nice. Actually, 
I think it was the seven hundred thousand dollar video uh, where we we uh, started out the video in one of the strip malls uh, just to kind of give you an idea but everything's very well laid out very well planned easy to get around a pretty good grid system on the roads not a lot of windy curves or, or crazy merges of uh, three different roads into one so it's pretty easy to, to navigate navigate get around you got a lot of your commercial concentrated on major intersections uh, and roads that uh, make it easy to get to so you know it's just very well very well thought out and planned and they uh, did that purposely from the beginning so that's what really makes Frisco unique and now if we get into the downsides of Frisco I mentioned earlier about new construction being uh, pretty much sold out except for uh, certain instances or cases where where we can get new construction but you'll definitely have to reach out to us on that but another major downside to Frisco right now is it's an extremely competitive market now that hasn't been a problem for us we've been able to win all of our deals in Frisco uh, we've had a lot of success uh, throughout this whole entire market and my partner Travis I tell you what one of the best real estate negotiators I've ever seen uh, we're just able to get deals done we haven't put anybody through buyer fatigue we haven't put anybody through losing any homes uh, so we've been very focused on making sure we get the deal the first time for our clients because we we just don't want to put them through losing multiple homes like uh, we have helped several clients that have uh, actually come from uh, other agents where they've just they've missed out on four or five sometimes eight homes and whenever they get tired of that then they give us a call now the ones that call us from the beginning of course they don't have to worry about any of that but either way we'll help you out no problem and um, but it is it's, it's extremely competitive and, that, and I'm not trying to take anything away from other agents it's just you have to have you know different type of skills to navigate this type of market so that's just something to keep in mind it's extremely competitive there's going to likely be over bidding uh, or uh, you know over, uh, offering over the the list price there's probably going to be multiple offers we're still seeing that we're actually seeing uh, right now um, less inventory again on the market and then that could be just from people uh, waiting to list their home right now maybe they're going to be waiting for spring or they've pulled homes off the market but we're not seeing an increase in inventory right now so with that uh, decrease in inventory and also uh, just the amount of people that are still moving here again we've got people moving here every single day in the hundreds hundreds they estimate 500 people per day moving here to the Dallas area well that's a lot of people every single day so uh, whenever you got limited supplies of inventory that's what's driving up the competition and the, the bidding the overbidding right now but again you just need the right team in place we know exactly how to navigate this market um, just in the last uh, 10 months we've uh, helped about 80 families in the last 10 months move here so yeah we average about 10 families per month uh, just to just to move here from out of state that's just our relocation and again we've gotten them all homes uh, typically on the first try so you just need the right agents to uh, to help you out and navigate this market now with everybody moving here that's another con about uh, well about moving to Frisco is that uh, traffic is starting to get a little crazy in Frisco so uh, because the population is growing more and more then traffic on the weekends especially around the malls and the commercial areas is is a uh, pretty significant right now uh, now here's the thing Texas I feel like Texas is always working on the roads they're always expanding always building new roads but I, but I tell you what it's a lot all right so just um, you, you have to bear bear with that but otherwise Frisco on the weekends around the commercial area especially around the Stonebriar Mall a lot of traffic and that's just things that they've got to expand the infrastructure there a little bit but overall uh, with that amount of people moving here and that just read the article as well that uh, Californians represent 42 percent of the relocation here right now so yes we got a lot of Californians moving here and why because you know because we are a freedom friendly uh, we are a um, business friendly environment here in Texas and so that's just something to keep in mind too that that Texas is very open very free and they believe in individual choice as much as possible and so that's just something that you know I think a lot of Texans here appreciate uh, and so uh, you know that's just something to keep in mind that people 
they don't. It's it's like, hey, let's all go to let's all go to work and and leave each other alone. On except we'll come together uh, to have fun and whenever we we need help from one another, right? Otherwise, it's kind of like, hey, you know, stay <laughs> stay out of my business, uh, kind of. Uh, let's just uh, do our own thing, but uh, in a nice kind of way. And that's what we love about uh, being here in Texas. And you know, as far as you have the freedom to run your business, uh, to make your choices uh, with your family and your health. I mean, that's that's. I think that's what people really, really love. Uh, that, that's why people live here, and that's why people are moving here as well. Uh, tax friendly, very tax friendly state as well, which that coincides with business friendly. So uh, all those all those factors come into play. But otherwise. A lot of people moving here, right? So especially to Frisco, that means that traffic is bad in that area. And actually Salina, which is north of Prosper, which Prosper borders Frisco, and then Salina is just north of that, uh, recently just pulled more building permits than Frisco. So uh, even though Frisco is expanding and growing ever so much, uh, there's not as much building going on or new construction as what we're about to see in Salina. Now again, that's what I believe going back to earlier whenever I said I believe that that'll help keep Frisco prices in check because people will just easily move up to Salina to where uh, Salina, Salina is slated for 350,000 people as to Frisco's right now a population of 200,000. So Salina could actually grow uh, almost twice the size of Frisco, and they've got a lot of space up there. They're com they're expanding the tollway up that way as well. And once that tollway expansion is completed, then Salina is going to absolutely blow up. There's a uh, there's a new new uh, there's seven thousand a new developer has acquired seven thousand acres all along the tollway where they're building that out. It's going to be mixed use development, apartments, condos, townhomes, single family homes. Uh, what was it? Uh, 3,000 single-family homes within that 7,000 acres as well so it's it's going to happen so guys if you're if if uh, if you like to speculate or you like appreciation in your home value then still Frisco is a great area to buy in uh, because every it's, it's still gonna be popular and even with all that growth in Salina that's just a hop skip and a jump away and so appreciation is gonna be growing in Salina as well and I tell you what with the interest rates as low as they are again I, I wouldn't really wait i would buy something even if you only plan to be there for a year or two maybe turn it into a rental but even in this type of market there's opportunity that you could turn around and sell that and probably have some good equity and, and possibly make out uh, better or uh, help have more money to put towards your new house at the time now again you'll be facing different interest rates and a different market at that time so uh, i don't like to speculate too much I usually deal in what's going on right now because when our clients are looking to buy, they're looking to buy right now. So that's what we really focus on is securing each and every deal. But uh, you know, that's just something to keep an eye on. I mean, we're growing. We, there's there's no uh, there's no getting around that. It's not going to stop. So those that are waiting out the market, it's only going to it's only going to increase uh, for what we're seeing. All right, so that means with all this influx, another downside to being in Frisco is there's a lot of apartments popping up. So, I mean, not that that's a bad thing, but that's just, you know, when you can increase, when you can build up, right, you build multiple units up, that means you can just put a lot of people on top of each other. And of course, when you do that, that's more cars, more people for the same amount of space. And so that's what's also contributing to the traffic uh, issues there and the you know just a lot of people going in there it could because there's a lot of apartments going up now over 70 percent of the people in Frisco own their own home which is a, a pretty good ratio that's definitely good for a resale uh, but also that's what you want in your neighborhood you definitely want a higher proportion of owners than renters uh, whenever you go to sell your home and so that's always something to kind of keep in mind but other than that, you know, a lot of apartments going up, not a bad thing, but their pricier apartments are going to be in the 1500 and up range likely. I mean, these are really nice apartments, all the amenities, the pools, the workout rooms. I mean, they're getting a little crazy on their on their amenities, which are awesome. And, and the community is going up in uh, these northern areas as well. Prosper, uh, McKinney, you know, they're building all these blue lagoons, these beaches. I mean, they're, it's beautiful. It's kind of like being in the Caribbean, but you're, uh, you're in your neighborhood in Texas. Pretty cool feature, but they're, the lagoons are absolutely beautiful. And so features like that are really putting these communities into high demand as well because people like that. And it's, they're, well, they're actually pretty cool, right? So a uh, great place to gather for the weekend, hang out with all the other neighbors. 
um, cook some food, hey, let the kids play on the beach, <laughs> the beach. And so, hey, you don't, hey, at least you don't have to be stuck in the car with them, uh, you know, for several hours to try to get them to a beach. You can just go to your community pool. But yeah, that's the amenities and the things uh, they're adding in. Definitely check out, we've got some videos on Prosper that uh, showcase a couple of those communities, but they're building new communities in Forney and McKinney uh, with these blue lagoons. They're absolutely amazing, but uh, which we can help you out with those as well. So you can def definitely give us a call on that. All right, and that's probably one of the last cons. Uh, I kind of mentioned this earlier with the tolls is that, uh, you know, with the Dallas North Tollway and the Sam Rayburn Tollway, that's going to be your main avenues or main uh, highways to get around and so you're going to have lots of tolls that's just going to be part of your daily life so that's just something to you know keep in mind and account for and budget for now if your company's taking care of that no big deal but otherwise yeah you can get a toll tag and a toll tag is pretty cool you know you just uh, you have the account you put like 40 bucks on it and whenever you, it just charges it, it automatically and whenever you get down to like ten dollars it, it resets it recharges your account back up to forty dollars and that way you can just drive through all the tolls but it's just easy to use i mean you can use it at the airport um all, all that kind of stuff so it does make it a lot easier just to have the toll tag and uh, especially to get through tolls that we don't you never have to worry about having cash or anything like that on you so definitely look into investing in the toll tag all right so that pretty much sums up our pros and cons of uh, living in frisco texas and if you're thinking about making a move feel free to give us a call shoot us a text or send us an email we're happy to help you make that smooth move to frisco check out if you just go to the search bar on this channel and type in frisco you'll find all of our other videos on frisco so if you want to research frisco a little bit more or even plano or prosper or salina or any almost any suburb in all of dallas we've got it covered for you and uh, yeah you can just give us a call when you're if you have any questions or if you're thinking about making that move happy to help you out uh, let's take you around uh, we'll tack on a little driving footage around some of the frisco neighborhoods right after this and until next time, well, we hope to show you around town.